Israel has rejected a French proposal for an immediate emergency 48-hour ceasefire to allow humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. As Israeli air and sea attacks against the Strip continued into its fifth day, basic food supplies in Gaza are running low. Hospitals are struggling to cope with the rising casualties. Israeli Foreign Ministry spokesperson Yigal Palmor said any plan for a truce would have to make certain minimum demands on Hamas. They need to guarantee the cessation of rocket shooting. They need to guarantee the cessation of terror activities uh, by Hamas from Gaza. They need to contain some sort of guarantee uh, that will stop the smuggling of weapons and explosives into Gaza. Uh, short of that, uh, no truce plan can uh, hold water. Four Israeli citizens, including two Arab Israelis, have been killed by rockets from the Gaza Strip since Israel began its offensive on Saturday. Nearly 400 Palestinians have been killed and at least 1,600 injured. Latest reports indicate Israeli bombs have hit the network of tunnels under the Egypt-Gaza border that many have described as a, quote, lifeline for the Palestinian people because it's been a major channel for smuggling and basic supplies from e Egypt. Israel maintains the tunnels are used to smuggle weapons in. The Izzedine al Qassam brigades, the armed wing of Hamas, released a video statement Tuesday warning it would increase rocket attacks if Israel considers a ground invasion or the bombing doesn't stop. If you enter the Strip, the land of Gaza will turn into a volcano and explode in the faces of your defeated soldiers. We promise you that if you enter Gaza, the children of Gaza will collect pieces of your soldiers. Meanwhile, Hamas spokesperson Fazi Barhoum uh, said international peace efforts are too focused on equating the situation in Gaza and Israel. Regarding the talk about the ceasefire and engaging in calm, as they say, at the current circumstances, is an act of equating between the victim and the jailer. What is required at this moment and immediately is an Arab, Islamic and international effort to stop this aggression, lift the siege, open the crossings and a rebuilding of the Gaza Strip. And inside Israel, the hawkish Likud leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, rebuffed calls for a truce. He said on Tuesday the international community had to choose between Hamas and, quote, the rest of humanity. Netanyahu, who is leading the polls ahead of the elections in February, said a government under his leadership would use, quote, all means necessary to end Hamas's rule in Gaza. So now the international community has a question, and I, I turn it back to the uh, to our uh, critics, and I say, you have to take a stand today. You have to tell the terrorists that this is an illegitimate operation. You cannot say both Israel and Hamas are uh, symmetrically blamed. They're not. One side is to blame, the side that targets civilians and hides behind civilians, that's Hamas. The other side represents the rest of humanity. Now choose. I'm joined right now on the phone from Tel Aviv by the Israeli lawmaker Dov Khanin. He is a member of the Hadash Party, a Jewish Arab party, also known as the Democratic Front for Peace and Equality. Hanin has been speaking out against Israel's military operation. We welcome you to Democracy Now!, Dov Khanin. Hello, how are you? It's good to have you with us. We are also joined uh, via Democracy Now! video stream um, by the nephew of Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, he's at Brown University. We're speaking to him in Providence, Rhode Island. He's an Israeli conscientious objector. His name is Gen Jonathan Benartzi. He also uh, is a member of the Hadesh Party. Uh, I'm going to start um, with a member of parliament in Israel. Uh, I would like to start off by asking the response. In Israel right now to the pounding of Gaza by the Israeli military. Dov Kennan. Well, the most important thing to realize is that there is an opposition inside Israel to the war and to everything going on right now in Gaza. This opposition is a Jewish Arab one. Uh, on uh, Saturday night, we had a demonstration in Tel Aviv of 2,000 young people, mainly Jews. And there are a lot of demonstrations all over Israel of Jews and Arabs opposing the war policy of the current uh, government. This um, opposition 
is growing steadily. It is very important to know this and to understand that there are other voices in Israeli society who do not um, accept the uh, war and uh, believe there is a better alternative for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Uh, Jonathan Benartzi, as you listen to your uncle, who is vying to lead Israel in the February elections, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, what are your thoughts today? Well, it's not, you know, it's, it's not only my uncle. It's the voices of most uh, Israelis. And what's worrying is it's the voices of uh, many, uh, although there are many who, as uh, Dov said, many Israelis who do oppose this, there are far more Israelis who blindly support this. And, you know, even given the, you know, uh, war of, of, in Lebanon of two and a half years ago, um, where, you know, Israel killed so many people, um, and yet uh, emerged uh, uh, the, the loser, uh, by all accounts, um, uh, of that uh, endeavor. Um, they once again support something similar, which is bound uh, for failure um, only after, you know, collecting uh, hundreds or, or thousands of uh, bodies of, of dead innocent people. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you here not as uh, anyone's uh, nephew or anything like that, but just as someone who's, uh, you know, speaking as an Israeli, I'm not an American, and uh, trying to speak out to Americans to tell them you don't have to uh, support Israel uh, blindly. Not everything that Israel does uh, is uh, holy. And uh, sometimes you have to uh, uh, speak firmly to Israel and, and, and tell us, tell our government, um, you know, stop doing this. Uh, Jonathan Benartzi, uh, you are the first Israeli soldier to be court-martialed um, in jail. Explain what your refusal was first about. I, I refused to join the military for pacifist uh, reasons, um, and I was joined by others who uh, refused for pacifist and also political reasons uh, regarding the occupation. Um, and um, this was around 2002, and uh, I was jailed for roughly one year and a half in Israeli military prison. Of course, it, didn't, it never made it to uh, mainstream American media. It did make it to European media. But uh, America, in that sense, America is actually even worse than Israel, because in Israel, it was a public discussion. In America, it was, com was completely blocked from the American people. Dov Kanan, uh, the response of the Israeli government is that this is not equal, that it was Hamas that broke the ceasefire, um, that they continue to fire rockets into Israel. They have killed four Israelis, two of them Arab Israelis, that this is their fault. Your response to that? Well, my response is, of course, I do not accept the politics of uh, Hamas. I think that Hamas is a disaster for the Palestinians and uh, you know, it doesn't have any political program of how to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. However, when uh, I hear these uh, speeches of uh, right-wing Israelis, uh, you know, it makes me wonder. You know, they do not see the fault of Israeli government and Israeli army in whatever happening in, in Gaza. And, you know, the things happening there are really bad, you know, a lot of people are dead there. What is their fault, you know? And the most important thing to realize is that there is an alternative. We should not go along the line of the extremists. We should not go along the line of total war between Israelis and Palestinians for generations. We should have another option, which is much better and possible. And that is the option of achieving a real and a substantive uh, peace agreement between Israelis and Palestinians. This is the possibility that the Israeli government do not, uh, do not accept. This is the problem. Um, 
Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the opposition leader, uh, running to head Israel in February, said Hamas openly declared its goal to eradicate the state of Israel from the face of the earth. They're aligned with Iran that openly declares its goal to eradicate Israel from the face of the earth. You make peace with those of your enemies who are reconciled to peace. Uh, Jonathan Benartze, your response. Well, you know, it, maybe someone should go to Israel and poll uh, Jewish Israelis how many of them think Palestinians should be eradicated off the face of the earth. You'd be surprised at the results, you know. So, uh, so these, uh, you know. Uh, Explain uh, that further. <clears throat> uh, 